Welcome to Bald Business, the naked truth in entrepreneurship. Let's begin. Episode 7, Bald Business, the naked truth in entrepreneurship. I'm your host, Michael Budenseek. Find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Michael B, as in boy life, Michael B life. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so excited uh, to have you on this episode because this episode goes hand in hand with last week's episode uh, with the timeline and a little bit overlapping, but it's important because today is all about creating a support system. You have to create a support system that you can rely on to help you reach your goals, right? So it's uh, if you remember from last week, if you, if you were able to catch last week's um, episode, it's 2015. Uh, my buddy wants to open his own gym. I said, yeah, we're absolutely going to help you do that because he was obviously helping us grow our brand and expand our brand awareness. Uh, his gym was going to be located in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, which was about 30 minutes south of Nashville, uh, about five hours from Indianapolis, where I was living at the time. And, you know, basically we were supposed to get access to the space uh, about mid June and hopefully. Uh, by August, we were going to be able to open up, which means I was going to be going down there two to four times a month uh, until we got things really rolling and started in the right direction, right? Till we got everything opened up, till we got a good uh, set of clients rolling in. But it was currently the end of April, and so I had a little over a month uh, before I had to start worrying about traveling and all those things, which allowed me uh, the first two weeks of May to really focus on something else big that happened in my life at that same exact time. Uh, May 11th, 2015, uh, my wife and I got married. And so, yeah, you're probably thinking, wow, that's a lot uh, going on. And it is. Um, you know, basically, we were getting married uh, less than a month before I was opening a gym five hours away in another state. And to top that all off, my buddy who was opening the gym, he was moving back to the United States uh, from a job out of the country that he was doing. And he was moving back to the States the same day we got married. So he actually flew in from out of the country into a tiny little airport uh, close to where we got married in Destin, Florida. And we picked him up early that morning and we got married uh, later that afternoon, early evening. And it really seems like it was a lot of crazy times, but looking back, I'm like, well, that's pretty normal for us. I mean, um, my wife always says to me, she's like, you can't, can never just let it be enough. Right, um, and she—I mean, she likes it. We have fun, so it's not a big deal. But um, I constantly want to be doing things, um, and so, anyways, we got married, Destin, Florida. Uh, we actually st- stayed there and hung out with our families uh, for the rest of that week uh, because we really wanted to spend some time with them, and we'd already had a trip planned for later that year. Uh, to go do one of our fa- most favorite things, which is scuba diving. If you've never been, I highly, highly recommend it. It's a completely different world down there, and it'll probably change your life once you experience it. Um, but we had a trip later in the year planned to do that, and so we just decided, hey, we're just going to stay and hang out with our families uh, for the week. So we did. We got home back to Indy uh, around the 18th, I think it was, of of May, and Pretty much from there, the first or second week of June, I was gone pretty much the whole week uh, in Tennessee helping prep things for the work to come. Um, I came back. Her and I went down there at the end of June to help paint, lay floor, uh, set up the offices, a bunch of, you know, little odds and ends. Then July comes. I was gone for about a week and a half in July. And then August hits, and we we hit our target for grand opening. Uh, And pretty much the next four months, like clockwork, uh, every second or third Monday morning, I would leave at 3 a.m. Uh, out the door and get to Tennessee by 7 a.m., which was nice because I gained an hour going down. But then I'd be gone until late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning, and that was just pretty much our routine. Um, and a- adding all that time up, right? I mean, I'm gone 7 to 13 days a month pretty much for the first six, seven months of our of our marriage. And you know what she did? She said you know what? I support this. She would 
pack me food. She'd pack me snacks. Every once in a while, she'd throw an energy drink in there if she thought I was really tired or if I just wasn't feeling it that week. And, you know, she'd say, have fun. Hurry back. Have a safe trip. Hope it's hope it's a good time. Hope you, you know, reach your goals this week. I don't, I can't remember any significant strife or stress around the commitment that I had made to do this and help our friend open his gym plus expand our brand awareness. Now, I want to say real quick, that doesn't mean that we're perfect, right? I mean, there's plenty of other things that we don't fully agree on or see eye to eye on. And I'm not saying that it never came up as a topic of conversation because, again, we are people. We're not perfect. But the overriding theme, the overriding attitude that we both always had was support. And it wasn't like she was just saying it, right? She didn't like when I left. Um, But she supported the goals that we had and and the commitments that I had made. And, you know, she wasn't just verbally being supportive like, oh, you can do it. Yeah, that's great. I'm happy for you. She was literally living it. She lived it every single day and she still lives it every single day. And the thing with that, though, is we are on the same page when it comes to support. Um, We live it together. Like, I feel like a lot of times she supports me, I support her, right? But a lot of times in relationships, people tend to forget that it's a two-way street. A lot of times people want to say, oh, well, you know, I just don't have any, nobody supports me. No one, you know, no, no, no one believes in me, no one this, no one that. And we forget that we should be doing that for them as well, right? And so we just have to keep that in mind. But a funny, a funny side story, um, which goes right hand in hand with today's lesson with support and having a support system is about a year earlier, uh, so we were still dating, uh, so about a year before we got married, um, I have been scuba certified since I was like 18 years old. And I pretty much everybody that I see, um, I'm telling you right now, you should absolutely do it. Um, it's one of the best things you will ever experience in your life. And so I, one day I surprised her, I said, hey, I got you scuba diving lessons for your birthday. I think that'd be really fun. It'd be a hobby we could do together, you know, whatever, whatever. Now, side note, she's absolutely terrified of water. Um, She's fine in a pool, somewhere she can see the bottom, um, but she doesn't like having her head under. She doesn't like being submerged in water. So I already knew she was a little bit nervous going into it, but we had talked about it several times and she was like, I'd really like to try it, but I I don't want to spend that money and then hate it. And so I bought it for her for her birthday and uh, she goes to her first lesson, and after her first lesson, she gets home, and she just looks at me, and her eyes are huge, and she says, I don't know if I can do this. I, I don't I don't know if this is for me. And then she continues to tell me a story about how in class that evening, they had to get into a four-foot pool, and she had to just put on her gear. And if you know anything about scuba diving, obviously, you have a mask, you have a facial, or a, excuse me, a mouthpiece, then you have a big weight tank and a vest that goes on all for safety, Um, and so you can breathe underwater, but she had to put all that on, and she had to go and sit on the bottom in four foot of water, and she said that she just felt claustrophobic, and just this, this, basically just this overwhelming level of fear came over her, and she literally felt like, like in her head, she felt like she was going to die, and she said, I just don't know if I can do it, and I said, okay, I said, well, that's all right, I said, you gave it a try, if you know, I mean, you, you obviously finished the, 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 uh, course tonight. If, if you don't want to go back, then that's okay. Like, it's not a big deal. So she says, no, I, I really want to give it one more week. I know how much you love it and how much you talk about it. And I, I think that I'll really like it. I just, I got to work past this fear. And so she finishes the course. It's a couple more Saturdays. Uh, it's a relatively short course. It's just two or three, uh, weekends and you're done. Um, and about six months later, we go and do our first ocean dive. Once we got in the ocean, right? You're under the you're under the water for about thirty to forty five minutes. She pops up, absolutely ecstatic. Like she absolutely fell in love with scuba diving, and uh, she fell in love with it so much uh, that this past Monday we celebrated our fifth wedding anniversary, and she actually surprised me with a trip to go um, great white cage diving. Uh, at the end, toward the end of this year. And it's something that I've wanted to do ever since I can remember. I mean, again, I've been certified since I was like 18. You know, I've been watching Shark Week since I was probably like 14 or 15, whenever it came out. Um, 
but now she wants to do it, right? She wants to go on these trips. She wants to experience these things because she supported me in giving it a try, right? She supported me, so she wanted to give diving a try. And since I supported her, I said, look, if you don't feel like it's for you, if this isn't something that you feel comfortable with, if the if the uh, level of fear that you experience going underwater is that great, we don't have to do this right now. It's okay. I'm not going to be upset. So you're creating a support system. Okay, you got to create a support system that you can rely on when it gets tough. You can got to create a support system that you can rely on to help you reach your goals. Now, a, a support system is super important because pretty much most of the world is going to tear you down or just highlight the negatives. What you did wrong, what you're not doing right, um, you know, how much of a fail you are, failure that you are, how how you're going to fail if you do that. And I can't even begin to tell you how many people would say to me, well, are you sure you should be leaving uh, this much? Like you just got married. Or one person said to me, man, you must not like your new wife very much. Like I understand that that was their fear and their insecurity speaking. But at the end of the day, if she wouldn't have been so supportive in that goal, who's to say that those comments wouldn't have eventually messed with me or eventually affected us in other ways, right? So having a support system is not, only important it's vital now you might be thinking well i don't think it's that important you know i can do this on my own you know i don't i don't i don't necessarily need anybody to support me or believe in me and you know what 100 percent agree with you you actually could reach your goals and you probably can reach your goals without having a support system but i promise you 100 percent it's going to be so much better and possibly easier for you to reach your goals when you have a person or a small group of people who are there and they have your back and they'll help you out when you need it. A support system is vital to your success. So a couple things like how do I create that support system, right? So Michael, if you're saying a support system is so important, how do I create that support system? If you're saying I can create that in others, how do I do that? Where do I start? Two biggest areas that you have to start and you have to start immediately is be honest. You have to be honest about the goals, dreams, hopes, like all the things that you have that you want to achieve. You have to be honest about those because here's the thing. Let's say, for example, um, that I would have originally told Audra, you know, I think I just want to have one location and I don't you know, I'm not not really super concerned about doing anything else. I just kind of want to lay low. Um, you know, how confused would she have been when I said, "Hey, I'm ready to open location two. I'm ready to open location three. Hey, I want to travel five hours. You know, uh, one way. So ten hours in the car, two to three times a month to open this other location with my friend. Like, how confused would that have made her? Maybe maybe how much uncertainty that would have given her about us and our relationship, right? Um, but I was up front with her. I said, hey, I want multiple locations. I want to help hundreds and thousands of people. I want to make a difference. Like these are the goals. So you have to be honest about the goals that you have when you're talking to family members, friends, small groups of people, um, coaches, whatever it is. You have to be honest about your goals if you want support in those goals. And then the second thing that you have to do or you can do um, to start creating that support system is be supportive. So I love this idea of give to get, right? So you're looking for someone to support you. You're looking for someone to believe in you. You're looking for someone to back you up. If you can't find that, or it's not just falling into your lap, go find someone who needs that and give it to them. Because I 100% promise you, once you start doing that for others, the law of attraction will take into effect and people are going to start supporting you, probably overly supporting you, pretty much immediately. So number one is be honest about your goals. Number two is be supportive of someone else. Be supportive of someone else who needs support, someone who, someone who may be struggling, right? Create a support system that you can rely on to help you win, to help you reach those goals. And today's episode's a little bit shorter, right? Because it's just this idea of, look, you need people in your corner. It's not going to be a lot of people. But having a support system is integral to your peace of mind. And what I mean by that is there are a lot of people that 
and I don't want to say a lot, like I don't want to make, I don't want to make it seem like there's tons of people, but there are several other people that do support me in my goals. But you're not going to find but a handful of those people in your entire life, especially the ones that are 100% supportive. You're going to find people that verbally say they're supportive, but their actions say some something completely different, or their words. Maybe their words to you say one thing, but the words to everyone else behind your back says something completely different. You're only going to find a select few handful of people that 100% support what you're doing. And here's what it gives you. It gives you a calming effect. So it gives you peace of mind. So if you know, hey, I've got two, three, four, five, maybe 10 people that I can rely on, that I know support me, that I can go to, I can get help, I can get help, guidance, I can get coaching, I can get support, I can just get some motivation, some accountability. I can get all of these things from my small support system right? Think about this. You throw out an idea, right? Maybe 10 people crap on it, but then you have two people who are like, you know what? No, that really makes sense. Go after it. Do it. You can do it. I believe in you. Like it's going to provide you with peace of mind that you are taking the steps in the direction that you need to be going to reach the goals that you have for yourself. So create a support system that you can rely on to help you win. Thank you for joining me today. Episode seven of Bald Business, the naked truth in entrepreneurship. I'm your host, Michael Budenseek. Find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and I look forward to seeing you next week.